What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, let's talk about fixing some minor issues with Split Fiction. First of all, fixing micro stuttering and sometimes a bigger stuttering, screen tearing and things like that, that can mostly happen beyond chapter two and issues where you're trying to start the game, but you're getting weird out of memory errors and things like that. First of all, this game is fantastically optimized and a huge hats off to the developers. They've absolutely knocked the ball out of the park once again with yet another split screen co-op game. That's just fantastic to play. That being said, it does have a couple of issues at least further into the game. Digital Foundry made a great video praising this game on pretty much all platforms, including PC, and yes, I would 100% agree, everything up to chapter two runs fantastic. I played this about two thirds way through on a 4080 mobile at 2K, and solidly I was getting 100-ish FPS throughout the first two chapters. However, chapter three and beyond dropped to about 40 in gameplay, and that was a little bit jarring to move between the 60 to 80 in certain areas to 30 to 40 here and there, especially while parkouring with lots of effects and things like that. It was kind of difficult to get used to the difference in input latency, making it just a little bit harder. So what exactly is the issue? Well, in just a moment, I'll show you the starting area of chapter three, nothing beyond it, nothing in it really. There shouldn't really be any spoilers there. So joining myself here for quick testing, the cutscene here seems to run at about 60 FPS with everything maxed out, which is pretty good until we look over here, it drops to 50 something. Suddenly I'm at 38 and just taking a few steps forwards, I'm seeing a solid 36, 37. So not the best, but if you find yourself in this situation, pause, head into options, graphics, and you've probably just like me cranked absolutely everything all the way up. Look at shadow quality, take this one step down from ultra to high, just like that. I'm suddenly at 54 FPS compared to 36. So that's a what 66% increase in performance just with one simple change. If we drop this a bit lower from high at 54, I'm now at 60 for medium and 63 for low. The only setting that really seems to matter here is shadow quality for some reason. High is as high as I would go with that if you're experiencing stuttering. Other than that, this game works absolutely fantastic. FPS wise, it works really well, especially in the first two chapters. With this subtle change, it works pretty well throughout the rest of the game. If you want to make your experience even better and you have a ton of FPS to spare, set your anti-aliasing to temporal AA and crank your resolution scale to 150%, for example, this will lower your FPS, but the game will look so much crispier, even 200%. By doing this, you're rendering the game at a much bigger resolution than your actual display, downsampling it, and the output visual quality of the game is just going to be fantastic. I would not recommend anything lower than 100% with TAA, as it adds a huge amount of blur to how the game looks, weird shimmer, and stuff like that. However, if you're playing in DirectX 12 mode, which you are by default, AMD FSR 3.1 is an option. Setting this to native AA should give you a slightly better looking game than temporal AA on 100%. So here's the difference between these two. It's just a bit clearer to see into the distance with FSR 3 instead of TAA. But of course here, native AA is the highest setting that you can choose on FSR 3. If you wanna go higher than your actual resolution, use TAA. If you need more performance, however, with him, I would recommend FSR 3, probably on quality, if not maybe balanced on lower end systems. For me, for the most part, I only really gain extra performance setting this to quality, anything lower than that. I don't really seem to get anything out of it other than lower quality visuals. I'll need to lower some of the other settings to gain more FPS. And that's pretty much all that we need to worry about here. If you experience screen tearing, which I did in the later parts of this game, before I knew about changing the shadow quality option, just enable VSync and that should get rid of screen tearing entirely, but it will lock you to your screen's refresh rate. So 60 FPS, 120, 144, etc. Besides that, this game is super well optimized and works great just out of the box. But if you're experiencing out of memory issues when you're trying to play the game, especially on old graphics cards, find where the game is in Steam, in the EA app, or wherever you are, right click it, choose properties, and on the general tab under launch options on other platforms that may be in a different place, just enter hyphen DX11 in here instead, and this will launch the game in DirectX 11 mode instead of DirectX 12 mode, making it more compatible for older systems. This has been known to fix the out of memory error when you're 
you're trying to start up the game or just see the main menu, things like that. This should help fix any issues, especially on older systems. As for FPS and performance, playing in DirectX 11 mode is roughly about the same. However, options, graphics, FSR 3 is no longer an option. You only have TAA, and again, I'd only recommend playing at 100% here. Unfortunately, we don't have any other kind of upscaler. That being said, is shadow quality still an issue? Well, if I fire back into the game, I'm getting around 70-ish FPS here, which I think is probably about the same as we had before, if not a bit higher. As for how the game looks, it should be mostly the same, if not slightly different. So 68, 70-ish FPS. If we re-enable ultra quality shadows, FPS drops from 75 to the low 60s. So there's a pretty big change, but it's not exactly 60% of your performance change. So as for what causes this issue in DirectX 12 mode, I'm not entirely sure, but anyways, there you go. DirectX 11 mode is more of a fix for lower end systems. Split Fiction is absolutely fabulously optimized. Hats off once more. This guide was more of just a quick tip. If you're planning on playing it at all, just keep these in mind, especially if you're planning on cranking everything. If your performance starts to struggle like it did with mine pretty reliably on two different setups, that's the center change. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name is Troubleshoot. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.